That's great. Okay, so Adam, have you got any more questions to me then? Any more questions to you? Because um, I've got some questions to you, definitely. So to start with uh, your questions and then um, I will ask you also some, some things. Great. Okay. So, well, I was thinking we've mentioned Java 1 already because it's coming and yeah. obviously it's a big event for, for the Java E community. Uh, a lot of people are going to be there or even those that are not going to be there, they will be listening uh, and, and looking for the um, announcements. So, um, you've said sometime in the past when we were having a chat at one of the conferences that you don't see yourself as a conference speaker because you are a Java developer mm -hmm. first and Java consultant, but you do speak at a lot of the conferences out there. And uh, for a lot of people that follow you, that, that like your work, this is um, the only chance to see you speak and, and talk to you directly. So we know that you're coming to Java 1 next month and, and your talk schedule looks really, really busy. I think you've got about six talks uh, on, your, uh, on your schedule there. So there will be some general Java e Q&A, there's some user group sessions, you'll be talking about Nashhorn and microservices. There's quite a lot to cover there. So can you tell us a bit more about your Java 1 talks and, and what you're going to talk about? Oh, now I have to look up my schedule. <laughs> I actually forgot what I submitted. Um, Actually, the uh, the story of uh, Java 1 is a little bit crazy in my case. So my first Java 1 was in the year 2000, yeah. I think. And um, I was I was like really delighted what's going on. It's like one day I would try to speak at the conference. And I tried that, I think, for eight years. Okay. And it never worked, or for seven years. And in 2007, my first talk was actually accepted. And this was a talk, really crazy one how I hacked my heating in my house. So it had nothing to do, you know, with uh, a little bit with Java E because it was Java E5 uh, first uh, example. And uh, the, the uh, attendees liked the talk. And uh, what, what I did, I submitted a lots of topics in the hope one will be, is going to be picked. And the uh, year after this, in 2008, all my talks were, ta were were taken, and I had to speak, I think, seven times or something. Oh God! Uh, yeah, which I uh, which <laughs> I actually didn't like at all, but because I really would like to spend the time uh, as uh, as a listener uh, to to the speakers, to other speakers. <laughs> and what happened then? Since then, I tried to submit only a few talks, and I I have six talks in total, but this only because uh, people asked me afterwards, after the uh, call for papers, whether I will join them. And I think there is one talk um, regarding IDEs, so I will just cover NetBeans, what you can do with NetBeans. And the two, uh, two other talks um, is NetBeans Day, together with the NetBeans guys and James Gosling. So I, I will probably just uh, know, have, get, get a slot for five to ten minutes. Mm -hmm. And the other slot is uh, on Glassfish Day, where I will get another slot for probably 10 minutes. And my three regular talks, I try to find them right now, is one, ah, I found it. So, uh, this is the uh, one talk called Building uh, Nano Services with Java E and Java 8. Uh, this is the Glassfish talk, um, and my actual talk is from macro to microservices and back, on stage checking with Java E7. So uh, what I will try to do then is just to explain that microservices are not, you know, the answer to all questions. It's not the 42. Rather than last one, probably, is even more interesting. Um, mm -hmm. And, and um, so these are actually the uh, two main talks. And the third one is Birds of Feather. It's my very, very first one. And okay, what I will try to do is to live stream a QA session from the uh, Java one. If the live streaming won't work out, then I will try uh, to, uh, to, to, to submit it afterwards. So I, I got actually three talks, one about NAS1, one about architectures, and one Q, QA very much like this. And after the session, I plan to find a bar uh, and, <laughs> and go with the attendees to drink something. So if you like, join us. I, I definitely will. And if you guys are up there at Java 1, then, then yes, definitely join us. I mean, Payaro is there as well. We're going to exhibit. Uh, we also going to speak. So, so Steve Millage, our our technical director, he's also got three talks. Um, 
conference talks so we're definitely there uh, for you guys to do uh, just have some beer or maybe ask some or maybe answer some questions but it depends what time of the day it would be <laughs> um, so yeah, you will the, be the whole history actually uh, last year yeah I joined a talk about Jcash and it was delivered by Steve Millich and That's I didn't right. knew him, so I just uh, watched the talk closely, and he mentioned Payar on something, um, and it was really deeply technical talk, and I really enjoyed this. I actually hacked during the talk uh, some Maven, I tried to to make it work with Maven, and then ask some questions, and then I don't know at Java one or later Payar was announced, um, and I said, oh, Steve is a part of the of the crew, so it could actually work, and what I did, I um, I um, I um, uh, t uh, try to subscribe to the uh, GitHub feed, and I really regret it because there's a lots of activity going on. This actually you are overshadow all my activities on GitHub. So you know whatever happens on on my repository is overshadowed by overshadowed by your activities. Like you are going crazy on GitHub. So there's lots of commits. I so, like to hear that. This for me, yeah. And this for me is credibility because uh, it seems to me like one year. After so it is um, yeah it's I, I would say it's, I think exactly one year of Payaro right so it's it is yeah it's it going be. to be in September uh, well actually yeah Java one last year was a bit earlier so end of this month yeah. that's right we're going to be one year old yeah and the activity even increased so it's uh, good for me because you know uh, there are Java one after Java one everyone is active but usually then it goes away but you actually become more active which is uh, which is actually a uh, very good news. To me, because I can say, okay, look, they they were active for one year on GitHub, lots of commits, so um, we can trust them, which is uh, very important, I think. Great. Sorry, I interrupted you with your question. That's that's all right. I mean, that's that's the whole point. <laughs> you can interrupt me as much as I as you as you want, and and I would do the same. So um, okay. I was just. Uh, yeah, just going back to GitHub, and it's it's also thanks to our our contributors, and and that's obviously we're trying to uh, answer and and respond to to the issues as soon as possible. Um, but we wouldn't have anything to respond to if it wasn't for a community. So so we really love our Payara server community. These guys are are so uh, into it. They're really active. They they do so much. Uh, so yeah, just a just a big thank you to you guys again, and and if any of you uh, um, out there of attendees that haven't uh, joined the community, just have a look, have a look on GitHub. Uh, there's a um, web address on the on the slide that you should see on your screen right now. So yeah, just get involved if you obviously if you want to, and uh, this is this is all about you guys as well, and and all about the community. So we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing without you. So yeah, just 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 on that, uh, really. Um, just going back to your Java One talks, because uh, I know that you will be talking about microservices, and this is obviously the most recent hype out there, and we fall for it as well with Payara Micro. Um, so, what do you think the future is for microservices? How do you see it evolving? Is it is it is there a future, or is it just another hype that will go away? How how does that work? What do you think? So the um Secret uh, secret message just to you is you don't have to 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 go to come to my talk about microservices because it's almost the same what I said you know uh, the five years in a row so now we got uh, another name for the old Java e architecture mm -hmm. so um, what we did for years is we we created uh, microservices with Java e without knowing this and what struck me once is um, I recorded um, a uh, a web uh, screencast on my YouTube channel it's like um, what was it? Uh, thin uh, thin wars versus uh, fat wars. And uh, if you have a Java E server, and you have something like Docker, which is I would say integral part of uh, microservices. So usually, most of my clients are using Docker. Um, what what happens then is with Java E, with something like Payara, you become incredible, incredibly productive because. Um, your application server, the image where your application server resides and your operating system resides is, uh, is created once. It only changes in case uh, you are uh, releasing a new, new version of Payara. And the image where the application actually is, the, the war, is tiny because it only contains the business logic. So what do we find out? That with Java E building the solution and pushing it in production, is very fast and very productive. 
But without Java E, you would have to put the whole infrastructure to a war and it becomes very slow. And in one conference, I asked someone about the Fed jar hype. It's like, hey, what's going on with the Fed jars? Because it's uh, counterproductive in my eyes. And the, and the answer was funny. They, they, they told me, yes, but we invented the stuff before the advent of, of Docker. <laughs> so now with Docker, this is almost irrelevant. So um, what I think, what will happen with microservices? We will see a lot of broken projects because um, uh, people ask me the very first, can you do something with microservices? Like, yes, we can. But why to distribute an application which works well right now? So if you have the use cases, microservices are great. There's, I would say this is very pragmatic approach to um, service-oriented architecture or, or something like SOAP. But um, I think um, what's really exciting right now that you can be very efficient and what you can do, you can create one war, one app server, one OS image, and this is like a silo, and if, and if your project gets larger or you get another team, you can introduce another silo, and then you get your microservices. But you don't have to start with. And this is what excites me the most. And what's also funny, like, you know, the whole monitoring stuff, we had it in Glassfish and Payara for years, and no one was interested in monitoring and, and, and watching what's going on. And right now, it becomes very popular, and um, this is almost forgotten feature. So if, uh, during my conferences, if I show that you actually can look at the monitoring stats and see, you know, how often a method was invoked, the slowest, the fastest, uh, the uh, HTTP errors, and the rollbacks and commits. Everyone is delighted. Wow, it is a new feature. It's not at all. It was av available in Glassfish v V2 and, or even V1. I cannot even remember. But it's one of the first features I, I, I submitted a request to the, to the Sun guys back then, so it's 2009 around. So it's old, very old. So I think uh, microservices uh, could help us Java E a lot because because um, like Java E is per accident perfectly suitable for uh, for microservices, and all the restrictions um, we had in EJB programming model are, are, are very popular in microservices as well. So for uh, yeah per accident uh, we are in again. <laughs> that's yeah yeah that's that's interesting. So. Um... Yeah, well, I just I just had another question, but you've actually answered it uh, during during your your answer there. So, yeah. Um, okay. Just going back to Java one again, I think. Uh, so, have you have you actually looked into agenda? Is there anything that you would like to go and see as a as a as an attendee? Because you're usually really busy as a speaker. So, I don't know if you're looking forward to actually going and sitting down in the audience and and just listening. Uh, all the time. So, um, this is really a Java. One is really exhausting to me, so I spend from 8 to all the boss about 11 p.m. at the conference. So it is my to-do. The problem is I have several deadlines next week, so I just ignore Java 1 for a second. <laughs> but uh, what I will uh, uh, try to do to attend, attend as much as possible uh, Java 9 talks, I hope there will be some Java 8 talks to keep up with, uh, with all the new stuff. Then um, uh, probably some low-level talks like I will find some, oh, I always do this like, you know, bytecode engineering and very low level just for fun. And probably something completely different. So I try to, uh, be a little bit outside of, of my uh, of, of my work. Uh, what I also interesting is uh, serviceability and monitoring. So I would try to, to register as much such, such talks as, as, as possible. And uh, yeah, um, so I mean, Java 1 is really no vacation. So uh, after Java, Java 1, you're completely exhausted. And I think it's the same in your case, if you spend, you know, uh, 12 hours of the exhibit hall. This is also not a fun for whole whole week. <laughs> it is, yeah, it is. It is fun, fun one it, while it's happening, and and we really enjoy meeting people and and talking to the community. But yeah, at the end of those three or four days, it's it's pretty tiring. Uh, yeah, my, my, I wanted to ask you yeah. if, if you go into any other conferences if, for for people that are not at Java One, if they would be able to see you anywhere else, possibly, um, maybe in Europe. Yes. Um, what I what I try to do I try to avoid conferences because of the project load. So the yeah. Java E becomes for unknown reasons more and more popular. So I get lots of requests. So um, and I really enjoy projects and coding. So this is what I try to spend the most of my time. But I will this year um, attend the WJAX conference. It's like the uh, one of the largest uh, German conferences. Great, we're and there as well. There is a Java for pardon. pardon? We we're there as well. So that's great. Oh, perfect. So I could meet you. Yeah, we'll meet again. In person. Yeah, perfect. So we can discuss everything, everything else. 
So um, then in WJAX, then uh, there there is um, like a community conference called Java Forum in Hanover. It is in two weeks, and I was supposed to to deliver a keynote. Um, I just thinking about the topic. They didn't ask me for topic yet, so I have to to invent something. Probably something Java related. And I think this basically was for this year. Um, uh, conference in Java one, of course. That and like next year probably. The JAX again, and uh, let's see. I, I will skip DevOps this year uh, because of project load, so I have to do this. And um, yeah, see what happens next year. And what I do uh, more and more, if possible, I deliver Java user group uh, conferences via something like uh, virtual infrastructure, like um, um, uh, streaming. And um, they are actually well received, and I can save time and deliver more talks. This is what I what I do from time to time. So there are going to be more and more virtual conferences in, in my case if possible. And uh, what also interesting, um, the uh, chat is also very active in such virtual events. It becomes more and more active. Uh, at the last Java user group, I got 10 questions before even the, the show started. So um, it was uh, it was actually good, yeah. And um, yeah, I, I think you are you planning this uh, fish and chips also frequently, right? Uh, once a month or what is actually the plan? Um the initial plan is once every two months, uh, but if we can do it once every every month, that would be great. It just depends on obviously trying to get the right speakers and 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 people with the well, as you know yourself, overloaded with projects. So we would love to run them monthly, but for now, bi-monthly at least. That's the idea. Okay, because the next show, I would like uh, to to have some uh, engineering questions. Uh, to the uh, uh, interesting one, to, to the engineers from Payara. So if you have the next slot, I would like to reserve whenever you can, and um, uh, we can we can have a tech ch uh, tech chat if you definitely yeah. If you have some, I'll I'll drag them in. something. <laughs> you have to to ask Steve or whoever had time. So I have some some questions or questions, some discussion points. I think could be interesting. Yeah, definitely, that's a good idea. So, uh, yeah, the attendees here, you 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 know what's coming, <laughs> uh, what's coming next or in the next few months. Um, I actually got some questions from the uh, from the audience here. Uh, so this is a question from Stephen. Um, do you prefer to add Hibernate to your Payara and Glassfish servers, or do you keep default Eclipse link, and why? Um, this is a question to me, right? Yes. Okay. Um, Always Eclipse Link, and the reason for this is um, because you will find more installation of Glassfish or Payara with Eclipse Link than with Hibernate. So um, the more you customize, the less is likely they will find an answer at uh, GitHub or a Stack Overflow. And I don't know about your support, but I think for your engineers, it is easier to support Eclipse Link than Hibernate, right? I think so, yeah. Because um, uh, you you patch Glassfish with Eclipse Link, so there is a new new version, and uh, there is no official Hibernate distribution to my to my knowledge. So no. um, I, I would always prefer you know the out of the box solution without any customization. So the same would be true if you ask me you know whether we should replace Jersey with Rest Easy, whatever. I would always say no. Try to avoid variations um, because uh, it, why I like Java E. Because uh, the way how it how it works in my project is just we download, extract, and we just focus on business logic. These are all my projects. The the whole best of breed strategy or whatever we don't play play with the libraries. For instance, if I would choose Payara, I would trust the Payara engineers to deliver working Payara. And if it doesn't work, uh, I would try to to open an issue on GitHub or by support or whatever. This is actually the uh, the the Java E I would say. Uh, way of, of coding and um, so this is this is the only reason and what I know is some people migrated from Glassfish to Whitefly uh, because they had to there were different projects and they took Eclipse link with the migration to uh, to Whitefly because they liked the uh, error messages more so this was interesting explanation why they prefer uh, Eclipse link over Hibernate so my answer is, if you are using Whitefly, use Hibernate. If you are using Glassfish or uh, Payara, use Eclipse Link. Okay. Um, one more question here from Philip. Um, you predicted broken projects with people attempting to adopt microservices architectures. What makes you think this? What, what have you seen so far? Oh, um, 
the secret uh, the secret uh, is if you um, you should not forget things and uh, things tend to repeat every 10 years and um, what happened in the early Java days people tried to be distributed per default just because the belief was if we have distributed architect architectures we will scale better this was the back back in the days and we uh, the Sun Microsystems even delivered a remote entity beans so it, 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 it meant it was actually impossible to communicate locally with uh, with a data store and uh, what happened then there were many broken projects the performance was really bad and the consistency was even worse so the uh, the, the the remedy to the problem was to, to try to process as much as possible locally so what I see right now is people try to tear apart, apart working projects, uh, working monolith uh, into microservices, believing uh, it is going to be better. In my eyes, what you should do is reduce the bloat first, and you can reduce a lot of superfluous code in an average enterprise project. It is a way more than, I would say, 70%. So if you reduce the whole the bloat, so what remains is your business logic. And then take a second look whether it is worth to, to, to tear apart, apart this uh, uh, business logic into microservices. So what makes me so sure is because a, uh, to, um, to orchestrating and managing an or, uh, a distributed system is really hard. So you have to think about uh, CAP theorem, FLP theorems, and many other theorems. And if you have Every, if everything is running in a process on a JVMs, you can you can fully fully focus on the business logic, and there is no problem to solve. So if you like uh, if you like uh, if you if you like to uh, to have an exciting life, so um, introduce microservices for fun. But um, I would say after after a while, um, it is better to sleep to, to have a good sleep and and forget all, about the all, all the fancy stuff. Having that said. In my one of my uh, first project this year, we introduce we introduce microservices from day one. So we we started with a simplistic applications, which was microservice based. And why was that? Because from the beginning we had different departments, and we knew that the life cycle and versioning of the application was completely different. So per department, we published a new so-called microservices microservice. Funny enough, I never mentioned microservices in the projects, and the client never asked me about microservices. But in fact, they were microservices because the uh, because of the business requirements, like independent release of different parts of the applications by different departments. So this is and this was um, my, my first or my first my first microservice project this year, uh, and uh, this principle is also um, known as Conway Law. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, so Patrick, uh, was it? Yeah, no, no, it's happy. But I cannot see the answers, uh, the questions. Uh, yeah, I secret. don't know if I can share them with you. <laughs> Not because I don't want to. Ah, I think okay. it's the functionality here. Um, I've got a couple more questions from David. But, uh, David, if you can hear me, what I'm going to do, uh, it would be best to forward your questions to our engineer team on Payara side because these are uh, directly related to Payara. And I will get back to you on those definitely after, after the webinar. Uh, so I hope you're right with that. Uh, and also, David was mentioning... Uh, that he yeah he agrees uh, that uh, the excellent monitoring features of Glassfish or Payara server have been under underappreciated by the industry and for example Tomcat users. So that's that's what David says. Great, thank oh, you guys perfect. for for the questions. Keep them coming. Um, I've got a couple more uh, for uh, Adam here. So um, I was thinking about Java E8. Uh, obviously, and you've mentioned that before, uh, that some more some more uh, announcements hopefully will be coming at Java 1. So we know now that the roadmap update uh, was published uh, back in, I think, in June. And we, we know that the release has been pushed back uh, to 2017 now. Um, do you think it means anything in practice for the users, for, 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 the, for the customers? What do you think will have any impact on, on them? Um, so, um, I'm, I'm, what's uh, th th the biggest impact was for me Java E5, and in my current projects, I'm forced to use Java E6, and I'm really happy with it. So Java E7 would be a little bit better, but Java E6 is already fine. Java E8 is um, is going to be even better with the MVC and the new security stuff, 
but uh, I think starting with Java 6, Java 6 is perfect platform to build an average uh, backend for let's say uh, HTML5, iOS or Android apps so you can be incredibly productive with Java 6 already. So Java 7, 7 is even better and Java 8 uh, is, uh, comes with more features. But there, there is no more revolution. So what we see right now is more an evolution because if you look at an average Java e code, uh, at least in my project, you will find you know 90% business logic in a view uh, Java e annotations. Uh, so which which means nothing will change in Java e 8 either. So um, from my perspective, I, I really don't care when it find when it when it comes out. But what will happen is always funny. So mm -hmm. what happens is I get lots of comments on my blog like, you know, Java, Java E dies because the release is postponed. And if it comes out in 2017, what will probably happen? The Glassfish 5 will come out with Java 7 support and no other server. So we'll get comments and blog posts like Java 7, uh, Java 8 was released, but no server is supporting this and therefore it is unusable. So it is the, story, the history repeats every three years. It's exactly the same, yeah. And um, yeah. So um, I would say it would be great to have Java 8 tomorrow. <laughs> uh, it won't happen, so we have more time to contribute. But what already works right now, for instance, on Payara, you can try out MVC. It works even better than on Glassfish, because on Glassfish you will have to play it with daily builds, and on Payara it just works out of the box, which was amazing. And um, so you can use the technology right now, but um, what can happen, it will change. So what we get in Java with Java 8, we get you know the stability of the APIs, and you can try parts of the technology right now, but they they are subject to change. So um, for me, it's fine that it's postponed. Um, Java 7 was changed as well; the, all the cloud features were were not available. So for me, it's not a big deal. And um, who knows what happens internally at Oracle? No, they they laid off the evangelist. Probably they have some 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 resource problems or whatever. I have no idea. So, um, you know, you, you, you shouldn't be too worried about this, I would say. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's also you touched upon the, the other uh, interesting uh, topic that is obviously going on right now in the, in the industry. So all the uh, Java evangelists drama, as it's called by the media. Uh, yeah, this, this raised a lot of um, doubts and questions in the community. But yeah, I, I don't know uh, if we can say anything or, or, or assume anything before we hear any official statements to be fair. I don't know what you think about that. No, 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 we cannot. But, uh, you know, um, I don't know. You probably also worked with large companies in the past. Oh, yeah. And there is never, to my knowledge, never an evil dictator somewhere, you know. It's always <laughs> a crazy department or crazy manager or something like this. And there were strange things with large company in the past. And they asked, you know, the engineers. And they told me, hey, there was one crazy guy and this was the problem. So, um, and this could be similar like this. I have no idea what's going on to, uh, at Oracle, but it could be, you know, one uh, manager who is responsible for the whole evangelism and he had to save money because of, I don't know what, uh, management statistics or whatever they, 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 they have to fulfill. Um, and then it happened. So um, I, I don't think that now the Oracle plans, you know, to, to migrate all the Oracle applications to Node.js <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 I don't know, or Elang or whatever. I, I, I don't think so. Uh, and um, it is, it is, of course, um, pity because they were really passionate evangelists. This is really pity. Exactly. But yes, uh, it is right. not like Oracle is evil right now and, and don't like Java or whatever. I, I don't believe this at all. Well, obviously, some will jump into that conclusion, but that always happens, the, the usual argument, especially social media-led. It's a bit funny to watch sometimes. <laughs> but, yeah, I think we just yeah, have to wait uh, and see. Yeah, and I'm really curious about Java 1, about the keynotes and what happens, because yeah. uh, it happened before Java 1, and then and, and, uh, I don't know whether the evangelists had some talks scheduled, so um, it is really interesting what happens during Java 1 or the open world or whatever. Uh, it's always, uh, this is actually I'm really excited about. <laughs> the, um, it's, it's good to hear, because I had exactly the same feeling, like, oh, God, oh, I, I want to wait. I want to wait and see what's, what's happening, what's going to happen at Java 1. So we'll see, it's coming, so... Yeah. What I know, I asked uh, the um, about you know the Java one uh, attendee numbers. Uh, the the uh, it didn't got anything official, but um, I, what I, what I, what looks like that they they get more and more attendees at Java one, and and this is a great news. And this is not like you know a view attendees is a really a, a larger number of attendees, which um, which is also good news 
uh, to Oracle because they are selling the tickets. Definitely. So, um, I would say, um, and for, 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 Java, for, for Java, it looks great. So Java 8 uh, becomes number one again. And I got a tweet from, 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 from uh, an attendee and um, um, the uh, Java at GitHub is number two. So uh, it seems like you know revival of the Java popularity. I have to tell you, I was more concerned in 2006 about the whole Ruby on Rails tra drama. So everyone uh, uh, thought that uh, Java, uh, that Ruby on Rails will kill Java. This was the you know the common belief: Java is dead because we got Ruby on Rails. Even uh, DHH Daniel, um, how is it called uh, Hanson? This is the uh, guy behind uh, Ruby on Rails. Even comment, commented on my blog back then. This is actually unheard right now, but back then he uh, had some comments on my blog if I wrote that uh, there are some problems with transactions in, in the race. And what happened? You know, all serious startups converted to Java. So uh, Twitter was Rails, and now it's Java. So nothing happened, but, but now it's quiet. You know, now it's Java crazy popular, and no one talks about this. Exactly. So, um, yeah. Even there is like a dual perception, like uh, we um, at the Java conference getting more and more popular and all other communities like Python, Ruby and JavaScript, they say, oh, you know, they, they, they compare Java to COBOL and they have no idea what's going on in our community, how actually fun it is to working with Java developers and how many crazy good projects do we actually have. Yeah, that's right. Well, exactly. If you don't, if you don't do this, then, then you, you don't really know what's going on. Uh, so yeah, Java is, is is doing quite well for now, and and uh, yeah, we don't uh, we're not planning on uh, losing it at any point soon. So um, I've got another question actually from from one of our uh, listeners. Philip is asking uh, if I recall correctly, Java E7 was supposed to attempt to tackle cloud service provisioning or something, but it was dropped. What do you think uh, this should have looked like? What do you think the industry needs, especially where microservices are concerned? Um, I, was ex I was really excited about uh, Java E7, the clouds, not because of the clouds. If, you, if you're thinking about the clouds, there are specific requirements to run application in the clouds. And, and the requirement is to have something like de standardized deployment and monitoring API. And this was hugely important to me because uh, there was no standard in Java how to deploy applications. And what I would like to have is a like very simple API to deploy, redeploy, list applications and monitor applications. So why I need this? Because of automation, so continuous integration, stuff like this. Um, the good story is in Java 8 we'll get this. So we'll get, um, the, it seems like we get a new monitoring uh, API, uh, which is, uh, um, will expose JMX over REST and properly deployment API. And this is really great because then I can take Payara, put it in container somewhere, use Jenkins and use a common set of API calls uh, to push the application to Payara. This is actually what I released yesterday. I created my own called Loader, so command line interface, which uh, it tested with the recent Payara, where I can push applications from command line to Payara. The question is why I'm doing this, yeah, because I would like to automate everything in day one. I don't believe in embedded containers and embedded servers. So this was the most exciting feature to me and everything else like multi-tenancy and stuff like this, yeah, but I think microservices solve it partially because uh, what microservices try to achieve is to have independent parts of applications. If you have the truly independence, there is no shared database, so you obviously don't need, don't need multi-tenancy. But um, I think this view of completely independent, independent uh, databases is really hard to implement in enterprise. So uh, I, it, it would mean each department has an own database without any joins to other databases. So this is really hard to achieve. I, I have to admit, I don't even attempt it in my projects, you know, to talk about this. This goes too far, I would say. So um, yeah, the, the cloud features were partially gone, but um, they, they, they come back without mentioning the clouds, which is a good thing, I guess. Okay. I hope I answered the question. Yeah, yeah, I thought, I, I hope Philip is, is happy with the answer. Uh, if you've got any more if questions. should we ask the questions? I'm really glad to, 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 to answer this. <laughs> uh, he says that it was answered perfectly. So thank you, Adam. Oh, thank um, you. So, um, We've got another question from, from Stephen here. Um, what server operating system do you prefer for Payara and for Linux? Any particular distribution preference? 
of the Pair and the Linux. Um, what I'm preference, I use Red Hat a lot. Actually, everyone, uh, everywhere, Red Hat and CentOS. So on my server, I'm running Red Hat, and uh, uh, as a host, a CentOS 7 in container environment. My current clients are also using Red Hat. Uh, on my laptop machine, I'm using Ubuntu as a host because it came, I think, as default, um, as default Docker environment, and it just works well. There's no difference. And why I'm using Red Hat? Because they were one of the first who integrated uh, Docker, and I used Docker from day one without mentioning this, because as I used Docker, no one was excited about this, and for me, it was just a natural step forward. And before Red Hat, I really uh, appreciated Open Solaris. And I was shortly before uh, uh, migrating my server to uh, Solaris zones, and then Oracle dropped Open Solaris, or something happened. There was no next release. And then I migrated everything to um, to uh, Oracle Oracle Linux because of Oracle VM and the free virtualization. And the next step was uh, this is Red Hat based. And then I and, and so I have to say I spend a lot of time with Red Hat. But and I started my uh, Linux um, my 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 Linux career with uh, Deutsche Linux Distribution, is DLD, uh, German Linux Distribution, for unknown reasons. I just found the CD somewhere. And uh, then I switched to SUSE Linux, which happens to be Nova, Novel Linux. But I, what I found out back then, that uh, lots of, uh, in Java is going on, on Red Hat, and then I just switched completely to Red Hat. Yeah. And um, I also like uh, the community in Red Hat. I have to say, for, for what I see from, from outside, Red Hat is uh, a nice company. So I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, this is, what, this, is, this is my subjective opinion about uh, operating systems. What I see sometimes uh, is Windows, surprisingly. In some of the recent years, uh, I saw some installation on Windows, which really surprised me. But uh, Windows is getting better and better, and I think the new releases of Windows will also have a, a native Docker support. And uh, yeah, it's getting more and more excited. Okay, great. Hope this answers the question as well. Uh, keep them coming. Um, I was thinking we mentioned that you've used Pyara Server. You're using Pyara Server, which is which we're really happy about, and Pyara Micro as well, uh, especially in some of your online sessions. Um, so uh, the question that uh, would probably uh, come in useful for our engineers there is: What add-ons or enhancements would you like to see in the future releases? Because obviously you are working uh, with uh, Glassfish as well. Uh, what do you think we could do better? What we can add to to play our server to make it even even better for for just users, so, and community, and and customers. This is we need additional session with the engineers Probably. so I can explain you in more detail. But um, but uh, there is a, a a few small things. For instance, um, if you create a domain uh, of a Payara, it's like the initial setup or a glassfish, it takes a while because it, gener it tries to generate the SSL certificates. And if it, it would be configurable to skip that, uh, we could set up you know, uh, glassfish in seconds. And this is crucial to me because on each commit, the whole application server is automatically recreated from, from, from a configuration from, uh, which resides in Git. So I would say s small such things. Um, I'm in, in, the, in, the, in the grand scheme, I'm, I'm really happy with, with it. So I always was happy with Glassfish, and Payara is even better because, um, um, for instance, uh, you, you um, patched Eclipse Link, which um, helped me in some recent projects. So it didn't even work with Glassfish 4, but it worked perfectly with Payara, and that's why we, had, why we were able to switch to Payara, actually, officially. Um, and the other thing is, if you look at the Payara official Docker image, so what do you or what you propose on a Docker file, Glassfish setup in Docker is still a little bit complicated because you have to fire up the admin console uh, to set up Glassfish. And I think it would be nice to, to be able to more easily, or it is actually possible, to, you know, to edit the XML files directly so you don't have to fiddle with all the admin commands in Docker, just uh, extract and run. So um, I would say a small things like usability things and um, then it would be, yeah, perfect. But um, I'm really happy like it is today. So it's like uh, there is there there is nothing we change for worse if you if you if you if you um, um, compare it with Glassfish. So um, yeah, uh, easier setup, faster setup. This is a crucial thing to me, and um, expose as much as possible, you know, statistics. Um, and 
I'm, I'm a little bit lazy, but um, I think, I hope I will contribute it back. So what I created a few years ago is a project called Lightfish. It was a monitoring for glassfish. It also worked with Payara, but the internals are a little bit outdated. So I will probably port it completely to Payara, and this is what I could contribute mm. um, because I could also use it in my environment and my clients. And then we can also have a session and uh, and uh, talk a little bit what what can be happen even more, you know, to 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 produce even more statistics. Because right now um, you get the technical statistics, but I think we could even show even more what's going on within the application without uh, without any intrusive code. And this would be, of course, unique. So, that's, but that's um, really having said good. that, I'm perfectly happy with Payara, <laughs> and whatever I said right now, uh, it relates actually already to Glassfish, not to Payara. <laughs> Philip is already asking, can we submit pull requests for Lightfish? This was a really underrated project. Uh, pull request? Um, I would I was, I would um, accept pull request for, it, for Lightfish. It was with a little but, smiley face as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But... Um, but uh, um, if you look at Lightfish internally, I'm using the old JSON API, but I would like to use the new JSON P from Java 7. Uh, there is lots of old um, uh, old uh, asynchronous code there, but I could migrate to uh, Porcupine and Threads. So it would be uh, uh, way nicer. And having done this, we could extract parts of Lightfish and then use this as an, a command line interface for monitoring of the whole Payara. So I think uh, this is why I would need a little bit, uh, a few days, and then uh, go wide with it. And what's also interesting, um, I think this was uh, people from Canada, they use Lightfish to monitor their uh, server farm, and they contributed a lot of stuff. Uh, there was a Canadian government or something. Uh, there was official comment in, 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 in GitHub. So it, um, it, it's really funny. It was a very popular, but um, it just worked, and it worked good enough for Glassfish and nothing happens for recent years, but um, I will reactivate it because um, now I watched closely Payara and it seems like Payara will stay alive, alive with us for the next uh, few years, hopefully. Definitely. So there is a worth investing some time to Lightfish. No, that sounds really good, actually. Uh, so uh, if I don't know if any of our guys are actually listening, but if not, then they definitely I will let them know and they watch the recording. We'll, we'll work on Lightfish. That, that sounds like, like something that would definitely be interesting for for us and for the community as well. Uh, and actually, so wait for for I would say so two months or something. So there's winter. I will have some time, Christmas or whatever. So I would try to know to, uh, to improve Lightfish, <laughs> and then we should rejoin, and then we can restart the project. And uh, Lightfish actually neutral enough, so we can keep it uh, Lightfish. And uh, you know, I, I also plan to 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 uh, implement some Excel exports, which is already done with another project. So there's a lot of synergies going on. So a few days, and we could have a nice Lightfish project going on. And Steve asked me about already uh, last year, but really, just give me a few days, and then it is going to be ported to Java 7 on on the recent Payara, and then we can go wild with the statistics. Great, sounds sounds good. Um... Just really quick, because we we running out of time. Uh, we've got a, a last question from Philip. There, do you have experience with Hazelcast? Uh, impressions or opinions? Yes. Um, okay. Uh, funny funny story actually. Um, the um, the main the main author of Hazelcast, I forgot his name, he asked me once on my blog, it's like, we have, a, uh, we have a cache and we would like to open source it. Which version should we choose? And I say, okay, if you would like to be popular, choose Apache. And they say, thanks, and, they, um, and then they created Hazelcast and then I watched them closely, what they do. And, um, and then I forgot almost about them. And um, if you go to my blog, you will see stats. Or statistics on my blog, and, and I described the, the project called X-Ray in uh, one of my books, but the first version of X-Ray was a version which talked to a central database, Derby, and then Java 8 came out. Uh, it was very early, and I, and I played with streams and lambdas, and I th uh, and I, uh, actually b before the final release, and what I what I saw is it is very similar. What you could do with lambdas and streams, you could do this. Uh, you can do the same with JP, JPAQL and vice versa. And what I did, I ported the JPA part of the X-Ray 
to uh, Hazelcast and Lambdas. So what happens is the whole statistics are computed in memory in real time, and there are. And if you go to my blog, you will find a project headlands. And what headlands is? It is the REST interface, REST interface to Jcash and Hazelcast. So if you if you start multiple headlands. Um, instances, they will communicate with each other, so what you will get is like NoSQL database right away. And also the funny story, there's a Payara branch. Why this? Because Payara comes with Hazelcast, so if you deploy Headlands to Payara, you don't have to deploy Hazelcast. So, um, and Headlands is, the, uh, is my monitoring um, monitoring interface for, for my blog, so I see what's going on. So this is what, like my somehow mission critical project because I get around yesterday there were 30,000 viewers um, on my blog and if it's not available I get lots of emails. Do you know that your blog is not online? So it has to run. So it's somehow mission critical to me. But what's all, even more interested, I, I don't know when Java 8 came out. It has to be one or two years ago. Uh, before it actually came out, some of my clients had problems with JPA performance uh, from, from data uh, lazy loaded from different database. And we actually reapply the same architecture from my blog, and we performed in-memory queries with Hazelcast and Lambdas, and it was 100 times faster than the origin JPA implementation. And um, this was, and in my current project, which I hope I, you get an interview, this is actually a Payara project with Hazelcast. What we do, there are swing clients which communicate with the Payara backend. And what we did was a little bit crazy because um, after a few weeks, the client, what they actually wanted to have is like, if, some, if someone changes something in the UI, the changes has to be immediately visible to all other clients, which is usually, I would say, which is unusual requirement, but for them, it was, it was obvious that it has to behave that, that way. I was like, okay, obvious, uh, actually, usually not, right? All the clients are independent, it's okay, okay. And in this particular case, we introduced um, Hazelcast, so what it means, the swing clients are, are storing something in the Hazelcast, and if event is distributed, so it's basically a peer-to-peer -peer architecture. So yes, uh, surprisingly enough, we use uh, Hazelcast a lot in projects, from uh, my leisure projects to commercial ones. Okay, thanks very much. Yes, this for will that. answer. <laughs> right, so uh, I think because we we now uh, wow, it's been an hour already. So um, we don't have more questions from the audience. Like I said, I will definitely get back to David. So um, I think I think the last thing to say really is is uh, is there anything? Um, are you are you working on any projects, Adam? That we should be looking out for anything coming, or are you just you just busy with with your day to day stuff like like we all are. I'm very busy, but what you can look at uh, yesterday, it, uh, it was a very small utility I reactivated. It's called Loader, LoDR, it's an open source, and this is like deploying, undeploying uh, applications with a single jar to Payara. So I just tested with Payara. I use it right now in my commercial project. And we can, from command line, you can say Java minus jar and point to the war, and it's automatically deployed to Payara, which um, helps me a lot because I don't have to pollute pollute my Maven project with that, and don't have you know uh, to use the curl client. So it is, um, uh, and um, already people seem to like it. So I got already feedback, and um, this was this. And um, now uh, my suggestion to you, if you like, um, and you have time and don't get any additional guests, we can arrange a meeting with Payara engineers, and we can discuss some stuff like you know the monitoring stuff, and probably if you like the SSL stuff, and it could be also. I hope interesting to the audience, so they can give you feedback directly whether they would see something like this. It would be a little bit tech, more technical, but not on the code level. It's more like you know uh, some features. I have idea, and 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 so if you like, we can do this in, in the future. Yeah, I think I think just based on our conversation we just had, I think we've got a lot of uh, a lot of things to cover uh, for the for the next event like that. So I think we can safely say that yeah, we're going to run another one with you, Adam. Uh, probably let's wait until after uh, November when all the conference season is, yeah, is finished. Yeah. 
and possibly maybe After in Jawa, December. even better, because then we have some some yeah. some stuff to discuss, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. There will be, I'm sure there will be lots to discuss. All right then, so that was great. Uh, thanks very much for your time this afternoon, Adam. Uh, that that was our first Fish and Chips, Friday Fish and Chips event, uh, and I'm, I'm really happy you could join us. Um, so I hope you guys found out uh, all you wanted from Adam today, uh, and if you've got more questions, I'm sure Adam will be happy to answer them during one of his uh, next uh, Hacks TV sessions. Uh, when's, when's your next one, Adam? Uh, it is uh, usually the first uh, Monday of the month, but this time is uh, one week later because of the keynote at Java Forum in Hanover. So uh, it is like uh, October the 15th or something like this at 6. And yeah. OK, all right. So you can also feel free to ask Payara questions. Yeah, definitely ask ask Adam about Payara server and if he if he can't answer, but I'm sure he can. But in case he can't, then then drop me an email. Um, so meanwhile, as promised, later today we will also announce who who uh, out of all of you guys have uh, won a Badass Fish T-shirt. So keep an eye on your inbox and Payara Twitter uh, at Payara Fish. So. I think that's it for today. Remember to join Adam's Air Hacks and follow him on Twitter um, at Adam Bean. Uh, have a great weekend, everyone. Have some fish and chips if you can, and uh, in a proper British Friday afternoon fashion, of course. And we'll see you next time. Bye. And you see, the, uh, and you will send us the chips via attachment, right? Ah, uh, it would be great if it was. If it, we if can it download the work fish, like that. What about the chips? I'm sure you okay. can get fish and chips <laughs> anywhere in the world now. So try and try and have some. Perfect. Definitely. Okay. See you later, guys. Thanks, Adam, again. Thanks. Bye. Bye.